no provided a decisive stimulus encouraging Yeats to embark on a new form of theater. However, Yeats's knowledge of No was minimal and twice removed. He never witnessed a No performance, nor had Ezra Pound, his primary informant, who wrote a No-style play himself. Yeats's understanding of No and how No contributed to his theatrical agenda are clear in the poet's introduction to certain noble plays of Japan. At the start of the introduction, Yeats states that the No plots remind him of Irish legends and that Pound's translations have allowed him to invent, quote, a form of drama distinguished, indirect, and symbolic, and having no need of mob or press to pay its way, an aristocratic form. No reinforced several aspects of Yeats's developing aesthetic of theatrical performance, including the use of non-realistic and simple stage setting, the use of masks for main characters, and the importance of minimal musical accompaniment and intoned text. No influence is most directly apparent in Yeats's four plays for dancers, works which constituted a new theatrical genre. These consist of At the Hawk's Well, 1916, The Only Jealousy of Emer from 1919, The Dreaming of the Bones, 1919, and Calvary, 1920. At the Hawk's Well and The Only Jealousy of Emer form part of Yeats's cycle of plays devoted to the legends of Irish hero Cuchelan. In At the Hawk's Well, set in the Irish heroic age, Cuchelan seeks the well of immortality. He meets an old man at the well who warns him of the futility of this request. Cuchelan is transfixed by the hawk-like guardian of the well and misses his opportunity to drink from the magic water. He then embarks on a battle with a fierce mountain woman and thus begins his heroic and tragic destiny. This play is based loosely on the plot of Yoro, in which a young man seeks an immortal water for the benefit of his emperor. And the only jealousy of Emer is also based um, loosely on a no play. Yeats's four plays for dancers continue numerous contain numerous stylistic elements of ritual performance derived in part from no theater. Yeats created his own formalized dramatic structure for this new theatrical genre. Each of the plays are opened and closed with ritualistic unfolding of a large cloth by the three musicians as they sing the opening and closing songs. At the Hawk's Well begins with an invocation, signaling that, as in No, the setting is to be described rather than naturalistically represented, and that a spiritual performance of a legendary tale is about to begin. I call to the eye of the mind, a well long choked up and dry, and boughs long stripped by the wind. And I call to the mind's eye, pallor of an ivory face, its lofty, dissolute air, a man climbing up to a place the salt sea wind has swept bare. Yeats's poetic text exemplifies both the spirit of European symbolism and the Japanese aesthetic of Yugen, subtle, mysterious beauty, beauty and profound meaning suggested rather than directly presented. As in many forms of ritual theater, including No, the characters and actions of these four plays are timeless and generic, while also specific to a particular mythic tradition. Yeats's chorus of three musicians is seated in full view of the audience and describes the setting and actions of the major characters. As in No, the sets and props for Yeats's dance plays are stark and symbolic. For example, in uh, At the Hawk's Well, the well itself is represented by a simple square of blue cloth. Of the aspects of ritualistic performance that Yeats adopted from No for the creation of his new form of total theater, the use of masks, text intonation, and stylized dance proved the most significant and in the case of dance and music, the most difficult to realize. Masks are to be worn by several of the major characters in all four of his dance plays. Those performers appearing unmasked are most often directed to wear makeup that creates the impression of a masked face. In his preface to the four plays for dancers, Yeats states, quote, 
the face of the speaker should be as much a work of art as the lines that he speaks or the costume that he wears, that all may be as artificial as possible. Yeats was well pleased with the masks designed by Edmund Dulac for At the Hawk's Well, and boasted in a letter that with the production of this play, quote, masks were being used for the first time in serious drama in the modern world. Being neither a choreographer nor a musician himself, Yeats had to rely on other artists. Of the several components of no performance, Yeats received the least information about the music. However, what he had been told concerning the use of a few instruments for minimal accompaniment and the style of the vocal chanting formed part of his shock of recognition. Throughout his career, Yeats was both determined to discover some musical form of recitation for his poetry and plays, and he was utterly opposed to most forms of text setting and singing. In his publication of Four Plays for Dancers, Yeats included music for two of the plays. In addition to designing the first production of At the Hawk's Well, Edmund Dulac had also composed the music. Dulac stressed in his note to the printed score the importance of achieving a simplicity in musical style, and the manuscript for that part of that score is upstairs in the collection, in the exhibit. The only suggestion of the influence of No in Dulac's music is in the minimal instrumentation and in his instructions for the accompaniment to the dialogue. Dulac composed for a bamboo flute, harp, drum, and gong, and noted that the drum and gong should be oriental in form. He also wrote that, quote, the drum and the gong must be used at times during the performance to emphasize the spoken word. No definite notation of this can be given, and it is left to the imagination and taste of the musician. Yeats never understood that no is chanted throughout. In the dance plays, he limited the sung passages to the text of the four instrumentalists. In many cultures, ritual is a democratic and inclusive event for all members of the society while in others, ritual performance is reserved for a priest caste and is witnessed by an initiated and noble few. As poets, Yeats and Pound particularly admired the poetic subtlety possible in an aristocratic form of theater such as No. Yeats clearly believed that his plays for dancers were a form of ritual that could only be appreciated by an aristocratic or ideal audience such as yourselves. In 1929, Yeats famously wrote, quote, I always feel my work is not drama, but the ritual of a lost faith. In order for ritual to be achieved through the performance, Yeats believed that it was necessary to limit the audience to those who could engage intellectually and spiritually in the performance. He therefore decided to remove his plays from the public stage and its demands for realism and to offer these works in the privacy of the aristocratic drawing room of patrons. So perhaps we shouldn't go to the waiting list for tomorrow. Yeats hoped to create plays that were, quote, remote, spiritual, and ideal for an audience composed of the right people. In his note to the only jealousy of Emer, Yeats rejoices in his, quote, freedom from the stupidity of an ordinary audience. He fused his devotion to Irish myth and legend with the general anti-realistic and ritual elements of no performance to create an intimate form of sacred theater, a theater not unlike a private seance. The noble plays of Japan assisted Yeats in his efforts to invent an aristocratic and ritualistic theater that could call up the heroic ancestral spirits of ancient Ireland for the benefit of his modern nation. Although Yeats's encounter with Japanese dance was filtered through European modernist influences, his basic understanding of the aesthetics of no dance were fairly perceptive. As in no, the dramatic climax of each of his plays for dancers is marked by a major dance. Travels of great distance within the drama are symbolically depicted by simple circular walks on stage and through the narration of the chorus or a secondary character, as in no performance. For a brief period, Yeats was able to collaborate with an aspiring choreographer, the Japanese dancer Michio Ito. Yeats celebrated Ito as, quote, the tragic image that has stirred my imagination, 
and he stated that Ito made at the hawk's well possible. Ito took the silent dancing role of the guardian of the well, the female hawk. However, as had been true of Pound, Ito did not bring an authentic understanding of No to his collaborations with Yeats. Ito had had some training in kabuki dance, but his commitment to dance arose only after he witnessed performances by Nijinsky in Paris and Isadora Duncan in Berlin. Um, he actually went to Europe to become a European opera singer. That would have been a very different paper. In 1912, he began training in Dalcroze's eurythmic techniques. By the time he reached London and began his professional dancing career, Ito was fully committed to the aesthetics of modern Euro-American dance. He became associated with Pound in London in 1915, and he assisted Pound in editing Fenelos's papers. Finally, Pound introduced Ito to Yeats, and the plays for dancers genre was born. When Michio Ito left for New York City in 1916, he brought his own versions of No with him. In 1918, he staged the No play Tamura in this city. He went on to perform his own production of At the Hawk's Well at the Greenwich Village Theater in July 1918 with a new score by the famous Japanese composer Kosaku Yamada. And I was intrigued um, viewing the exhibit today to see actual uh, letters from Yates to Dulac worrying that what will happen to my plays when they go to New York and we don't have an audience of the right people. You can see them for yourself. Ito then brought this production with him to California in 1929 and brought Out the, ha At the Hawk's Well to Japan in a 1939 performance, returning to Japan for good in 1943 following his release from a Japanese-American internment camp. Ito had traveled around the globe and he had inspired writers and composers with elements of Japanese music, theater, and dance. At the Hawk's Well was then adapted in 1949 as a no play, and it entered the no repertory as Takado Izumi, thus completing one of the most extraordinary circles of cross-cultural encounter in the 20th century.